Hello boys and girls. In this short video we are going to elaborate on some stochastic process milieu notation. There's some fairly, um, let's say, uh, idiosyncratic notation there. And I'm going to elaborate it on it by using very standard uh, computer science inspired functions. So especially if you know um, some type theory, these are prevalent there, uh, also relevant in category theory, just the most basic functions. And I'm just going to give some more clear characterizations of various notions uh, having to do with laws of process and these kind of things. Um, I'm motivated uh, by actually wanting to do a video on explaining the Wiener measure in terms of uh, the analogy of a denumerable Markov chain. This is related to both path integrals in quantum mechanics as well as uh, diffusion models in machine learning. So this is something that is coming up, maybe in the next two videos. Um, and um, if you um, if you're familiar with the concepts here on the page, and if you're interested in uh, stochastic processes, then you should maybe watch this video and refer to it later, um, in case you are also uh, a person that occasionally finds some of the probability theory notation confusing. Okay, so with that said, let's jump into it. I try to keep it relatively short and not explain things that are more or less um, on the page and self-explanatory uh, in too much detail. Uh, but first I'm going to go through a bunch of uh, computer science -y functions and then uh, carry them over to a probability theory. So first we have here the swap function taking as input a pair of elements and returning a pair which just has the inputs swapped. You can see here the type. Um, this uh, sort of notation uh, demands some um, pattern recognition from uh, the user, so to speak. But uh, more formally, of course, um, you can use the projection functions out of a pair to define this like so. Okay, then there is these things, uh, elev evaluation and applications of functions. And sometimes uh, people use them interchangeably, but really um, they uh, have some oft used formal definitions and you see them here on the page. The eval function or elo evaluation takes as input a pair, first component being a function that can take the second component a value as input and just applies it, right? Okay, this is uh, going to be one of the main players. Um, currying is when you have got a function, capital F here, of a pair. You now we are dealing with a lot of pairs here and returning some value and you turn this into a function which takes as input uh, one value um, and then returns a function which takes another value and then returns this thing. So you get rid of the pair and in, instead uh, don't return a, just a value C but a function into the value C. Okay, and then we're not going to use this but the apply function you see defined here, right? So this um, has uh, quite a bit more complicated uh, type and the return value of apply is function as you can see here so this is actually different than in general the eval okay but i'm not going to use it so you can read this here this is a very simple definition okay and so firstly um we are going to discuss the object that we are actually not uh, going to use much namely um, eval concatenated with swap so this is a function which takes a pair and then switches the pair and applies eval um, and if you if you pa pattern match, you know what we just saw before, uh, swap sweeps the um, inputs around, and evil takes its first argument in f and second argument in x. Then uh, evil swap ju is a f just a function which takes its first uh, element of the pair and a value, and then a function. But that's the same as evil. Okay, so um, now. Uh, we are not uh, going to concatenate these functions, but we are going to evaluate curry on eval, right? We said curry is a, a, a function which takes a function as input and returns you another function. And the eval function is a function, right? 
And so you, you can uh, pattern match uh, the things that we have seen above. Um, if you do it you know, by yourself, maybe it's a good exercise, then you um, get these um, associations, right? I, I called uh, the types X, Y, Z and A, B, C, uh, so that they are different, that it's a little bit easier to chain these things together. And then uh, if you do that, then what you get as a return type of curry of evil of this function is a function which ta takes a function to a function. And um, if you know a little bit of you know free theorems theory in um, uh, parametric uh, type theory discussions, then you'll know there can only be basically one generic function which does that, which is the identity. So curry evil, if you you know take the definitions above and, and exit out, you find out that, that this is actually just the identity functions on some function space. By the way, I say some function space because all these definitions like curry, evil, swap, and so on and so forth, they uh, ought to work with all um, all types, all X, Y, Z. Um, that's the parametricity. That's why there's a nice category theoretical concepts as well. Um, and so actually for any like pair or triple of types, you get a different curry evil. I give them the generic name curry. It's already quite long, but in reality you have for every like collection of types, right? For every X and Y type, you got some evil swap. Um, okay, just as a comment, this is basically, you know, they're natural uh, in some sense. Okay, and now uh, the more interesting thing. Uh, evil uh, swap is also a function which takes a pair as, as an input, so we can also do currying on it. Um, and now if we do that, we get uh, this construction. Uh, curry of evil concatenate swap is a function which takes an input and returns a function which takes a function as input and returns uh, a value of the output type of the function. So if you do that and go through the steps, then you get this thing, curry of evil swap taking a value is a function which takes a function and evaluates it. Not surprising that the evil here pops up again. And so basically what this is, is the, like this thing is the function which first takes a value and then you get a function which takes any function which can take that value as input and returns the value at that x, right? Okay, hope that makes sense. So this function is like a projection, right? You, you get for every value, you get um, the evaluation function at that value. We're going to be in particular interested in x being the natural numbers and so if you, you know, take, for example, x, the, seven, the number seven, then um, you got uh, the function space is the sequences into y, and this uh, pi seven projects actually out, gives you the value of any sequence at the seventh component in the sequence. Um, okay, um, and so finally, one more thing, the inverse image operation, right? Um, we could also talk category theory here, functors, whatnot, but here I'm just going to define this thing as a function. Um, if S is, a, you know, SY is a generic subset of, of Y, I'm just going to call it S here, um, then the inverse image um, operation is one which takes a function as, as an input F and then returns the inverse image function on the uh, power classes and the power sets. So you uh, give you a, uh, any function and any subset of the codomain and you return all inputs to the function which end up mapping exactly into that subset of the codomain. Okay, and this thing is, is not common notation. This is generally written like this, right? The inverse uh, inverse of the function is a function which acts on the power set of the codomain and returns something in the power set of the domain. Okay, and so if we plug that together, right, so this is um, the inverse of carry, carry of evil swap, we get this thing. And so um, our, um, you know, you have to do again the pattern matching. If you take uh, some, some subset of the codomain and because the projection um, is taking functions as input, 
uh, this uh, the value that you get if you compute this is a set of functions which as input at the value x have a return value that lands in a subset of y okay so I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but this is the thing uh, that is super important for probability theory in the Kolmogorov axiomatization. And so you should really think about this thing. What is this thing? This is a subset of uh, functions, a sub subsets of inputs for the projection, which when evaluated at your X of desire, each return a value which lies in the uh, subset of y s okay um so yeah as i said of particular interest are uh these uh the x equals n because then the functions are just sequences and we are interested in markov chains in particular or any you know, stochastic processes in general but the next video will be on markov chains and then um what uh, we also uh, uh interested now is we have constructed for any fixed input x like a small n small x or small n uh, we said that uh, pi n is the projection function right the nth component of any sequence um, now we are uh, taking this function which abstracts n yeah this is curry aval swap without n already plugged into it um, and so this is, these are, are the sequence of projection functions, right? And um, we uh, do probability theory. So we have some context where on uh, the sequences into Y, right? is the power set of the sequences. So we have all, all possible sequences, all possible realizations and outcomes of uh, a stochastic process. We define some probability measure on there in the next video this will for example be the Wiener measure um, and we have this um, sequence of projections on this sequence of projections right given any random sampled um, stochastic process right any particular realization um, uh, you know even if it's just finite let's say then these um, the, all the projections are random variables right because any different um, sampled uh, particular uh, process uh, at value 7 or you know 42 or so, or so on and so forth might have this and that uh, value this is basically then um, probabilistic with uh, which you know if you do a sample of the whole sequence it's uh, this, the whole sequence is random and also uh, the value that uh, you get at component 7 is just as random Right? And in this sense, the projections are the um, stochastic uh, uh, so random variables there. And um, the sequence of them is uh, also an, a stochastic process or really the stochastic process, right? This is like the actual values that you're sampled, which are random variables. Okay, so I hope that makes sort of sense. Um, and... Um, The, um, the so the, the the sequence of actual projections of a realization is just the uh, the, the sequence itself, and in, the, in this uh, same way, curry eval right um, is uh, formally you know if you do all the write down all the formal definitions of the stochastic process, then you end up with something which is this, but despite you having wrapped a lot, a lot of uh, like code or a lot of notation around it, um, really, um, you if you just look at the components you sampled yourself, this is the, just the realization. And so the stochastic process there, if the stochastic process is a function of this sequence, is just the realization itself. So um, uh, take, you know, take any and uh, textbook definition of these concepts and try to find um, all this curry evil on this kind of things in there to you know take apart the definitions and then you'll see where there's sometimes a little bit of a confusion where this this uh, flipping of first input second input is like glossed over um, so you, people can use word you say stochastic process to mean several different things for example 
um, uh, you can uh, talk about the stochastic process without even defining a measure on um, um, function space, which is this uncountable set. You can still, you know, if you take any uh, book, do I have one here? Yeah, here, here is a, a Markov chain book. This certainly um, it does not go uh, super heavy on the whole formalism, on the whole measure theory and set theory. It still manage as to discuss stochastic processes. So even if the formal definition of a stochastic process is some, you know, random in some context, some random variable on this super big space, that might not even be mentioned in certain books. And then uh, you get the word being overused for different concepts. And uh, in the end, it's often just this sort of, um, you know, almost trivial flip around of arguments where uh, instead of the, the sequence, you get a collection or the family of all these uh, random variables and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm not sure how clear this uh, definition is, but I try to get to, to this video to stay under 20 minutes. Okay, in, in the end, um, here is now the, the real thing that I really want to get at. Um, as I elaborated on, the uh, we have X, capital X is the natural numbers. The um, P axis become literally just a projection of the nth component of a sequence. And then this object, pi n to the minus one of a set, is the um, collection of all sequences with which at value uh, fixed n um, takes some value there, right? So if you think of uh, all sequences as sort of these lists going from left to right, um, then it's like if you say, okay, on value seven, I, I make basically a, a in a whole, and there's this, uh, this subset of values that I want to consider, and there are certain sequences, which random sequences, which happen to pass uh, through it, and there are certain sequences which um, happen to pass uh, not through it. And so this, um, this construction here defines an event, it defines a certain properties, right? It, it characterizes the functions which at a certain time go through this whole. Um, so this is like one of the major components uh, because uh, in, in uh, stochastic process theory because once you have this uh, like they act similar to a base of a topology right there are certain events with which which you can then take and and in a finite fashion um, or, or a countable fashion plug together different sort of events right you can then speak of um, all the re the fun uh, sequences which at uh, component seven go through either of these two values and at uh, component 9000 go for a different value and you have um, with this construction this subset of function and if you take the intersection then you get the set of sequences which fulfill both you know going for the whole properties and so on and so forth okay so these um, if you have a generic uh, stochastic process it's usually called x or z and so this projection can also be a stochastic process, um, which is a little bit confusing because this is such a generic function, right? As we just constructed it, the, um, you, you can basically always define this sort of pi function and you can always define this sort of, this is this ge such very generic definitions that we just had. And then relabeling it to a stochastic process does make sense um to uh, track where is the bistochastic process i talk about but i find this i found this ju jump uh, a little bit confusing sometimes um giving something so like basic uh, a different name um in the different context okay and now the really bad thing is consider uh for example the subset of y being just a singleton set right um then we have this notation like this, right? So the stochastic process here, for example, this one, we take this one, is this um, this object which takes functions as an input and returns uh, values. And then this notation to, to you know say that is equal, that this this function of functions being equal to y uh, doesn't type check at all. But, but this thing, or sometimes it's written in brackets. Sorry. Um, this uh, is then just notation for exactly this object, the, the object which we just defined, right? The collection of sequences which at a certain point n go through uh, exactly y. Um, 
this is unwritten as this kind of thing uh, or similar this kind of thing both of those really doesn't ma don't really make sense if you take the the types uh, serious um, and this is then however used uh, to express uh, for example this thing right p x of n uh, equals y is taken to be the chance the probability of uh, this stochastic process um, being found to be have the value y at, at at n exactly what I just talked about you know at, at for example at seven going through this value y um, and this is the notation and it you know it makes sense it's kind of a concise notation but really p is a function as we as we defined it right p is a function on the power set uh, on the like on the power set of the function spaces uh, returns a value so this is a quite a big object that this is has um, I mean it will generally have cardinality uh, of the power set of the reals um, you know as big as a function space and so then it's weird then to get the proposition as an input or like something which has the form of a proposition but does not even type check as a proposition um, and also um, if this sort of uh, you know also if you do not just have a singleton but a whole subset then it's also common to write x in this and this uh, if this uh, it pops up often then it then gets another notation where you put the x n whatever stochastic process this is doesn't have to be the projection as a uh, subscript of p and then you define basically the induced probability uh, which is a function which does not act on subsets or events of sequences but acts on the output right by this construction with our pi inversion of pi uh, this this then checks out to induce this, this probability you can view this as a function of sn and this is then called you know the, the law associated um, with the stochastic process okay um, as a last note here um, I want to say that um, there is a small um, small thing where uh, stochastic process is been defined as a family as a set of random variables but this is also from a fully like uh, technical perspective um, a little bit, li little bit misleading because we always talk about the sequence where the these random variables have a particular order right there's the first component first random variable in the in the chain in the markov chain say and then the second and so on and so forth so this fa this family has an index set and you have to um, uh, remember the order depending on how you define family that checks out and then the family uh, index by n is just sequences it's just a sequence um, but I just want to point it out that in general you know especially if you don't have choice then not all sets can even be well ordered so you should not just speak of a set of random variables if there's necessarily an order there but okay but this is just a nitpicking comment so um, with that um, I'm glad I made it under 25 minutes so I leave it at that I hope this helped somehow um, if you made it to the end tell me do you want to hear I will talk about uh, you know Markov chains um, and uh, absorbing Markov chains again this video that I did two years ago sadly only has like 250 views but it's, I think it's one of my more important ones it's a really uh, like a absorbing Markov chain video uh, really one of the things where so many things in math that I find super interesting come together and I mean similar to quantum mechanics right even if you're not necessarily a quantum mechanic guy there's just so much math coming together in this point that learning it you learn a lot for other subjects as well and so this is one of my more important videos i would say and sadly it does not have so many views as some of my more recent machine learning related videos um or on that note um i would be interested in uh, you viewers do you want to hear more about quantum mechanics or machine learning um these are coming together quite a bit in stochastic process theory Wiener measure it has to do with both of them more or less equally so um let me know what you want to hear. Okay, uh, with that, take care. Good Sunday.